Hi, my name is Stephen Turner, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to the first ever Zoom membership meeting of Gesher Galicia. And as far as I know, the first ever global membership meeting of the organization. For those of you who don't know me, I live in Roslyn, New York, and have been a board member since 2017 and president since July of 2019. It is my intention as president to increase membership engagement, and this Zoom meeting is part of that. As part of that outreach, we have recaptured the Gesher Galicia Twitter account, and I urge all of you on Twitter to follow us at Gesher Galicia. We also have a new Gesher Galicia YouTube account. Please subscribe to it to not miss any of our uploads. I want to tell you that we at Gesher Galicia are working very hard to constantly improve our offerings. Our research department, under the guidance of our former chair, Tony Kahani, is first rate and constantly working to provide more and more records to improve the experience of searching our databases. Our map room is awesome. In my biased opinion, the best there is on Galicia. We are working on providing an interactive map where someone can pass a, pan across a cadastral map of a town and as their mouse passes a particular house number, the vital records associated with that house will be displayed. This should, this should prove to be an awesome tool for our members. We are so proud of our award-winning quarterly journal, The Galiziana, under the stewardship of our Vice President, Andrew Zalewski, and our editor, Jody Benjamin. Andrew will speak more about this later. It is my mission as president to increase our outreach and educa educational efforts to preserve Jewish culture and heritage in the lands of Galicia. This year, we introduced for the first time the Gesha Galicia webinar series, and these presentations have proven to be extremely popular and have helped draw new members to us to the point that our membership roles are, are at an all-time high with over 1,600 members from all over the world. These webinars are recorded and uploaded to our members portal for viewers to watch at their convenience. If you haven't taken advantage of these offerings, I urge all of you to give it a try. Stay tuned for upcoming exciting presentations, such as an interview with Philippe Sands, the author of East West Street, and the Rat Line, the Klesler, and, and the Rat Line, the Klezmer musician, Yale Strom, and Jennifer Mendelssohn, presenting on dealing with endogamy when conducting your DNA research. We want to tell you that we here at Gesher Galicia hear you and are strenuously working on improving our website and the membership interaction experience. Charlie Katz, our treasurer and IT director is right now working on a brand new membership platform. We are also improving our IT capabilities to deliver research record scans on those interactive maps I mentioned previously. Of course, all this takes money, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here making an appeal. I will just quickly state for I don't know how many years, we are leaving our dues at $36 a year, which I'm sure most of you will agree is an extreme bargain. For those of you who appreciate what we do, and can afford to, it will be nice if you could go to our donation page and make a contribution. Thank you. Now we will have a membership report from our membership chair, Shelly Pilera. Thank you and enjoy the meeting. Hello everybody, welcome. Um, we have a lot of new things going on. I've put things on the screen and I'm gonna tell you more. With almost 1,700 current members it's time to update our membership process. The new membership procedures and online presence is not quite ready, nor is it live online now, but it's definitely getting close. Watch your e for your email messages for your renewal notice and details about our new membership process. Here are the changes and new options we are working on. 
Our new help session will contain instructions and FAQ, frequently asked questions, who to contact about membership, PayPal, donations, the Family Finder research, how to make a payment by check or credit card, how to change my contact info, what's my password, I can't log into the members portal, how to add surnames and towns to the finder, how do I join the discussion group, why didn't I receive my Galizzi honor? Before contacting us, please check the help section. The help section is not for assistance with your personal research. The membership year will no longer be the current calendar year, January 1st to December 31st. Your membership year will begin the date you join and will end one year from that date. You will receive automated email renewal will reminders. Once live, you will be able to pay multi-year annual dues for one, two, or three years with a small savings for a multi-year renewal. Self-service, you will be able to update your contact information, email and postal and mail addresses, phone number and your username and password all on your own. Our email acknowledgements will be automated, more streamlined, shorter, and focused. To renew or join, watch your email for your renewal notice in the next few weeks. The current membership page will shortly reflect dues for calendar year 2021. We will update this page again when our new changes are ready. Please be patient and watch for our emails. Be sure to take advantage of your member benefits. Only current dues paid individual members can access the members portal. If you join or renew now, your membership will begin now and be extended to December 31st, 2021. To stay connected, please update your email and postal addresses. The printed issues of the Galizzi Honor are not forwarded to your new address. So we must have your current address if you get the print issues. Always check your spam, junk mail, and so Gmail folders. Our messages often end up there and I get tons of messages about this. Please do this before contacting us. And lastly, if you um, once the member website is updated, you'll review Refer to the FAQ and check your spam folders before contacting us, but we'll be happy to help you if you need more assistance. Thank you. That's all. And thank you, Shelley. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Next, we will have our research director coming to us from London, England, to give us our research report. Tony, please take it away. Thank you, Steve. Um, please tell me if the sound or anything else is not working. Can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, Tony, if you could speak a little bit louder, that would be helpful. Yes, I will. I've got an external microphone here. So in this slide, you can see our current research projects and, and indeed those for the next year. Uh, I'll say just a few words about the first one, the Przemysl Identification Project, which uh, you see, which started about a year ago. Um, and it's perhaps the most uh, current and, and, and fastest moving uh, with new discoveries of, of our projects. I'll also mention briefly one particular theme in our vital record project for, for, for next year. And apart from that, my colleagues here in the research team, Andrew, Mark and, and Michael and myself will be happy to answer your questions 
uh, on research, either at this meeting uh, or if you write, as Steve said, to our info line, uh, address given at the bottom of this slide. In the uh, identification project, we have now identified 314 of the total 577 index books, which were previously of unknown source. And this is about 54%. We expect to finish by around May next year. In the next couple of days, we will be adding an, an, a new batch of about 20 identified files to the table in the members portal for, for, for members only uh, that show all the identified sl uh, files to date with links to their page images. The now identified files from 62 towns, uh, 60 of them fr from the former Galicia, and many of these index books correspond at least partly with existing and, orig and accessible original vital record books. There are others though that uh, have completely new information and we continue to find surprises. We'll be sending another update for members next month on all our research projects, including this one. And in addition, we will have articles over the next three issues of the Glitziana, two of them from members who have been identifying many of these books. Uh, I'll just briefly pay tribute to, to, to all the people or members who, who are working hard to identify books, uh, unknown uh, vital record index books, uh, at a rate of well over one a day and uh, and, and particularly to, to the coordinator of this project uh, Piotr Gumola in Warsaw. Turning briefly to the vital record project we, we've indexed over 30,000 records so far this year in this project and there'll be a new batch uh, added to the database in, in the next couple of weeks. We have an equally ambitious project in, in Vital Records for next year. And of course, the Vital Records project, like all our research projects and activities, relies on contributions, donations from our members and supporters for its successful completion. One particular theme of, of next year's project is on Jewish military chaplaincy records from the period of the First World War. We will be indexing such Jewish marriage, uh, J Jewish military chaplaincy records from Krakow, Krakow and Przemysl. Uh, these are marriage records uh, of the Jewish military chaplaincy for those two towns and both marriage and death records from Vienna, uh, which may seem surprising, but um, Vienna had, had a large, uh, a large part of its population at the time was originally from Galicia. And in working on these records next year, we'll extract those records, which is about 40% of the total, where a Galician town is mentioned, uh, either for the groom or the bride or for their parents. So I'll, I'll, I'll finish then, hand over to, uh, I think it's Andrew next or whoever it is. And uh, you're welcome, of course, to ask us questions on the vital records. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Yes. And now I'd like to introduce our vice president, Andrew Zaluski, who will uh, talk to us about our educational programs and the Galiciana. Well, th thank you, Stephen. Uh, it's great to, to be on the meeting. Uh, together with all of you. Um, so educational activities uh, are important part of the, our aspiration, uh, what we want to deliver to the membership. And in this context, I would like very briefly a comment on three topics on our journal, 
on strategic partnerships uh, with external organizations and then on ongoing uh, uh, outreach uh, programming. So let me begin um, a few comments on our journal, on the Galicianer. Um, this is uh, an activity that is aimed at providing you, our members, uh, a little bit more reflective space for learning and uh, sharing knowledge uh, about, the, about Galicia. Um, I understand that uh, we had so many intrusions uh, on our lives this year's, year, so if you have missed uh, any past issues of the journal, um, please remember you can uh, uh, find them on members portal on our website and I'm almost certain that everyone will find something of interest uh, uh, to what you want to learn or what you want to uh, find out. Um, journal is continually changing. In fact, uh, let me take this opportunity to thank our members for about 400 replies uh, uh, to our questionnaire earlier this year. And based on your feedback, uh, we launched uh, a series of tutorials. Uh, kudos to Mark Jacobson and uh, Johnny Kahan for helping us to launch this series in September and stay tuned for more tutorials coming in December and then in 2021. Um, those of you who had the opportunity to interact with Jody Benjamin, our editor, know Jody's passion for good story, for uh, clarity of expression and for uh, making sure that your story resonates uh, among our membership. So, uh, please uh, uh, drop an email to Jody if you are interested in providing a, a topic for the journal. We cannot write article for you, but if your idea is uh, taken up for journal, Jody will do her best to make sure that your voice is clearly heard uh, among the membership. So again, Jody's email is uh, clearly stated here on uh, the web on that on a slide. And again don't miss past uh, issues of uh, the journal on the website. A second topic that I want to very briefly to address are our strategic partner partnerships with external organizations. Uh, this is uh, part of the growth of the organization, but it's also opportunity to create new value for our uh, members. Uh, we are building on a foundation uh, established by Tony Kahan, in the past few years, who Tony, as you know, established formal relationships uh, with many archival institutions in Poland and in Ukraine. So in terms of new uh, strategic partnerships, just a few words about partnership with Graz College, the oldest uh, college offering Jewish studies in North America. In fact, the college uh, holds its distinction uh, by accepting uh, women on par with men from its inception from 1895. Uh, uh, members, uh, members of Gesher Galicia can take full advantage of uh, educational offerings uh, uh, offered by Graz College. Our members uh, can benefit from a significant discount. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about Graz College um, in December issue, um, of Galicianer will have a full article uh, that will provide more information. Uh, next partnership that we hope to sign in the next couple of weeks uh, is the partnership with the Ossolineum Institute in Poland. Uh, very interesting archives. Uh, uh, we have a very good working relationship with this uh, institute and in fact uh, partnership will open further access to Jewish records uh, in former uh, Galicia. Again, if you want to uh, know a little bit more about the Ossolineum in light of the upcoming partnership, I will ask you to look at the June issue of the Galicianer that can be found in members portal on our website. Very interesting history. Uh, lastly, let me finish mentioning very briefly ongoing outreach programming that we have continued uh, on behalf of Gesher Galicia for the past uh, few years. Uh, we have given uh, to 
uh, talks to various JGSs and cultural institutions, both uh, in United St States and abroad. Uh, in fact, in February in, of next year will be hosted by our colleagues in Sacramento in California. For those of you who have ideas about uh, hosting venues or about the topics that you would like to hear about, please drop me an email and we'll try to uh, we'll try to accommodate uh, your needs. Lastly, let me finish, since uh, Stephen is giving me signal that my time is up, let me finish by uh, mentioning that in 2021, we'll be offering something new to our members, mini course on Galicia in collaboration with uh, Graz College. So please, please stay tuned for this new offering in 2021. Thank you. And thank you, Andrew. And uh... Andrew probably could speak for an hour alone on just the things that he has planned for us. He never stops working on how we could increase in educational possibilities for our members, and we thank him very much. Next, I would like to introduce someone who wears many, many hats in our organization. Some of you might not be familiar with him because he's a new member of, uh, of our board but Charlie Katz is our treasurer. He is our IT director, and he's also our media editor. And he's the one who, who, uh, who had nothing to do with my problems here today, but who, who edits all the lovely videos that we have for our webinars. And we thank Charlie and uh, we welcome Charlie and introduce him to our general membership and let let him say a few words right now. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Stephen, and, uh, every, and everybody who's on. Um, Stephen has, has actually just said a lot of what, um, what I wanted to go over. So I'm finishing my first year as the treasurer and IT director, and, and frankly, I'm honored to be able to support Gesher Galicia in, in a variety of ways. Some I'm able to use my professional background, which is IT and data management, uh, some just through business experience and that I picked up a lot over the years, like accounting and operations, and certainly out of my comfort zone, which has been uh, now video editing for um, uh, the webinars that, that Steve had spoken about, and uh, most likely uh, the editing the video and audio of, uh, of this, uh, this uh, webinar or this forum. I, I'd like to uh, extend my appreciation to the board and membership for their support and patience over the last year as I've come up to speed maintaining and troubleshooting the systems and very much as in, in advance as we upgrade the system uh, in December for the registration period as described by Shelley. Now, but I, I bring this up, um, you know, besides, you know, I, I mean everything with, with earnest, but I bring this up to remind members that the you know the this technical site could use some volunteers in a number of areas the uh, some members have made suggestions during the year raising ranging from the design of the site to information security and i'll certainly be reaching out in that regard but if you do have professional or advanced hobbyist experience in terms of uh, uh in terms of uh you know website uh design content infrastructure, etc. We could always use advisory or uh, or as we advance the uh, upgrades of the system, actual, you know, technical support. So you can put something in the chat or uh, in the questions, or you can email me at uh, charlie Katz at keshergalicia.com. And uh, thank you again, and I look forward to serving next year. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Okay. Next, from one of our newer members, we're going to one of uh, uh, the original uh, uh, members of our board. Renee has, uh, Renee Sternsteinig has one of the uh, lower numbers of membership <laughs> numbers that uh, she's very proud of. And uh, she's here to talk to us about uh, Family Finder and uh, and also our discussion group. So I'm going to thank you, Steve, and um, hello to friends around the world. It's exciting to see your your names listed. 
Um, I, as Steve said, I'm going to give you two brief updates on two important Gesher Galizia resources, our discussion group and our family finder. First, the discussion group uh, hosted by Jewish Gen. It's read by over 3,000 people worldwide, many very expert, and we have to go back to the other, to blue slide. And, hmm, slide's gone wild. Um, many are very expert and very willing to answer questions. If you don't subscribe, I encourage you to do so. Some news about the group. As you may know, the main Jewish Gen discussion group changed platforms a year ago. The new platform has distinct advantages. It allows attachments. It allows um, foreign alphabets, and it doesn't require plain text. It does have a bit of a learning curve. Um, we were given the option of continuing our list as a separate list. Most of the SIGs just folded into the main group. We did um, agree to that option, but we, we waited a while to switch to the new platform, but we will be doing that soon, so watch for news of that change. Anyone who currently subscribes will be automatically moved over. You won't have to do anything, but if you don't currently subscribe, here's where to do that, at least currently, it will, it will change. Um, next slide, please. Also a reminder that over 20 years of messages live on in the Jewish Gen SIG archives. You can often find answers to questions you may have there. And occasionally you'll even find postings by people who share one of your names or your towns. So I realize I'm going fast. I'll put these URLs into chat later, as well as my email address. And you can feel free to write with questions. Next slide, please. Also a word about the Gesher Galizia Family Finder. And I noticed among our participants, Peter Zavon, who, who started this on paper it, many years ago. And thank you to Peter. Like the Jewish Gen Family Finder, ours lists researchers, surnames, and towns of interest. But there are some differences. The Gesher Galizia Family Finder includes only current members of Gesher Galizia. So everyone listed is an active researcher. Searching is available only to members. And since it's not public, we're able to provide email addresses. So you're not just clicking, you, you actually have the address of the person you're, you're writing. You can write to a group, which is, can be a convenience too. And of course, our, our family finder lists only Galician uh, families and towns. You'll often find people in our family finder who are not in the Jewish Gen family finder and vice versa. So I encourage you to list in both. This is the search page, which you can reach through the members portal. It's hard to see on this slide, but um, in the last line, um, it says you can add your information to this database by clicking here. Most entries go through automatically. Occasionally, there's a question about a town name. It may be held up um, for further checking. It takes a few days to approve. We'll soon be updating the Family Finder, thanks to Charlie Katz, who you heard from. And we'll be adding new features, including an easier way for you to get to a history of your own listings. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Okay, next up, we have Mark Jacobson coming to us from Florida, and he will tell us about our info line. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Get down here. So, um, thank you for joining us today. It's uh, with Tropical Storm Eda here, so it's a little wet, weather's a little wacky outside. So try to stay on as long as I can. Uh, if you contact Gesture Galicia through our website or email us at info at gestergalicia.org, you will reach me. I answer all emails received at that address. If you have membership issues, please email membership at gestergalicia.org, not info, because I can't answer membership questions about passwords or about dues 
or about joining or anything that well, I have to forward all that stuff to membership. So it's easy if you if you have a membership issue to contact membership directly. I can answer questions about anything about any of our collections. If you need to know about getting an image of a record. And if you want to get a lot of people ask about images of records, the first thing you should do as a member is go to our member portal, click on the member portal on our website after you log in and click on uh, archival records and you'll see we have a lot of images online and we're adding more shortly but if you have any records that you need just uh, email and ask me for a specific one or two or three not a whole lot but because I have to go manually and look through through each record set that we have indexed over the past 10 years or so and find the actual image so it takes some time but then if you have a few I can do that for you and give me all the reference information from our index because some people just give me the name and I have, to, I have to need all the information from the index. And that's basically what I can do is help you with that. And I can answer questions about databases, database, things that we've indexed, things that we, we, we index and different things like that about what's going on. And so any questions about records or anything like that, please contact info at gastrogalicia.org. Thank you very much. Take care, have a good weekend. Thank you, Mark. Next up, we have our secretary, Milton Hotch, coming to us from Bethesda, Maryland. Milton? My job is to just try to be uh, compliant with uh, keeping people up to date if they want to know about minutes and things like that. I don't have the uh, depth of responsibility that a lot of the others have, but I'm always there to help. I try to help Shelley with some things and uh, anybody else who needs my help, if there's some need, I'm happy to do that. Thank you, Milton. Thank you. And uh, people should take Milton up on that offer. Next up, we have our newest board member coming to us from, I believe, sunny California, Darcy Stammer. Hi, everybody. Yes, uh, I'm the uh, brand new member uh, to the board, and I believe I represent the westernmost uh, portion of the hemisphere in terms of the board membership. Uh, but anyway, um, I've joined the board and uh, one of my primary functions is going to be to try to raise money for the organization, try to bring in some outside funding um, to support our research projects and to support the organization. Um, seeing if we can get some, some funding from maybe some grant money, uh, some other entities that might be uh, that we might be able to tap to to uh, you know bring some money in to help support support what we're doing. Um, as Steve alluded to earlier in this meeting, yeah, we have not raised dues uh, for years, and um, any donation that you're able to make at this point, we are much grateful uh, for that and would appreciate it. Um, and again, you know, again, as, as Steve has said, we uh, we haven't raised dues for you know, for a very, very long time. And uh, they remain at $36. So again, any, anything that anyone can contribute um, will be great, re greatly appreciated. And you can do that on, on our website. Um, another thing that uh, we've just recently done, uh, which is gonna help uh, bring some money into the organization through activity that people are doing normally is we've got a, um, a, a, a Amazon Smile account now on Amazon. And if you're not familiar with what this is, um, Amazon lets uh, certain types of charitable organizations um, receive uh, a portion of a, a person's purchase um, if they so designate that the uh, that they're you know if they purchase it on, on what's called smile.amazon.com. Uh, so we are now we are now listed on Amazon on Smile uh, Amazon uh, as a um, organization that people can can designate when they make a purchase. Um, so if you would go ahead and do that, um, and again, any of your, you know, normal kind of business that you're doing on Amazon, uh, we would be getting a portion of that from Amazon directly. Um, we'll be posting that link on the website before long. If you want to get the link, uh, you can go ahead and email me uh, and I'll send you the link so that you can set yourself up on Smile Amazon. And my email address is my name, Darcy.Stamler at GesherGalicia.org. Thanks, everybody. And again, I look forward to, uh, to working with uh, the members uh, and the board uh, in years to come. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. I just want to tell everyone about the SMILE account. Uh, 
when you purchase something on Amazon and you have so designated Gesher Glitzier as your designated charity, you have to log on to smile.amazon.com your purchase. And then, and, and then the shopping experience is the same. It's exactly the same. Okay. And, and uh, we, we hope many of you will choose to do that. Okay, moving from California to Warsaw, Poland, we, uh, re we call on our director, Michal Majewski, who's in Warsaw. And uh, he, will, he is in charge of our Holocaust record. And uh, Michal, uh, why don't you t talk to us a little bit? Thank you, Stephen. You know, Warsaw is not so sunny like California. Right now it's dark. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm head of the Holocaust project. Uh, this year we are uh, we want to uh, index materials from Stanislav. Uh, the whole project started about three years ago. Till this moment, we were uh, indexing documents from Nowy Sound, Stanislav, today Ivano Frankivs, Mielet, Sokov, and Chudet. Uh, All together, it's about twenty thousand records uh, indexed si since uh, three years. Uh, all together in uh, our Holocaust um, database, we've got 45,000 of records and uh, we still develop, uh, develop the, this, uh, this database. Uh, I hope that next year, 2021, in January, we, we are going to publish about 10,000 records from Stanislavov. Uh, we've got uh, about 1500 of pay, pages to, to index. So right now me and uh, my, my colleagues from, from Poland are working on that. If you have any question to me or suggestions uh, to this project, please ask. Thank you. Thank you, Michal. Thank you. Okay, that brings the end to the portion of our director presentations. And I see that we have about 20 minutes, but uh, I, and I'm, sh I'm sure many of the other directors can stay later if, if others, you know, I'm sorry for the technical problems at the beginning that took away from time. We do want to get to your questions and answers. So John, uh, who's going to moderate that portion, why don't you get us started? Okay. I'm just opening up the questions here. Um, first of all, there was one question that Shelly answered in the chat, but I just thought I'd, I'd mention it in case not everybody read the response. Somebody asked, uh, if I'm a member of Jewish Gen or JRI Poland, uh, is it advantageous for me to be a member of Gesher Galicia as well? Now, all of those organizations, uh, everybody is involved with uh, indexing records, with uh, getting information out to researchers. Everybody is working on different things. Gesher Galicia, uh, we're concentrating specifically on uh, Galicia. Uh, there are things that we're doing that other groups are not doing. There's some overlap, so definitely it's worth being a member of Gesher Galicia. And now to take, uh, go to specific questions that were asked. Um, Barbara Krasner asked, regarding the interactive cadastral maps, how will that work when the town records only show house numbers from a town plan and not an actual street address? And maybe someone can from the board can answer that? Uh, I could take a shot at that. Okay. Uh, yes, for, for many towns, the cadastral map is not similar to the street map. When there are interactive maps that we're gonna have. You'll be able to see the house number with what vital records are, are associated with that. What, what you need to do is to someone who has some experience with that town, usually a tour guide, if you want to know exactly what street, if you're planning to visit that town, that house number is. And, th and if you show them the cadastral map, they can usually, they can usually associate it. If you have a specific problem and you're not going to the town, you don't have anyone to advise, you could try to uh, contact our map guru, Jay Osborne, and uh, we will put his, uh, his uh, email address in the chat box and someone can type that in. And he could try to answer any specific questions about a specific map. But uh, that is a problem that, you know, street designs and topographies of cities change, but uh, the cadastral map is frozen at a point in time. 
But the most important thing that the cadastral map could tell you is what house is near another house. And it could tell you what, uh, if someone living in one house is more likely to be related to someone that was a neighbor. And, uh, and, and that's the way the tool is used. I hope I helped. Okay, the next question comes from Deborah Dworski. She says, or she asks, many of us had relatives in Galicia who either served in the military or in the reserves. Are there any surviving records to document military service? And if yes, how are they organized? And who has possession of these records? Can anyone from the board take a stab at that one? Andrew or Tony? Yeah, so let me maybe start. Uh, so, uh, Jewish service uh, uh, in military forces of uh, Austria, Austro-Hungary, and then in interwar Poland uh, belongs to those different buckets. I would say, depending on the period that you are interested, if you are looking for um, records uh, in a service in Austro-Hungarian army, I would suggest that you look at the uh, issue of Galician, I believe it was in 2017, we have a review articles, two review articles on a topic that provide various uh, details about the databases uh, in, that can provide you some answers. So again, if you drop a, a question to InfoLine, uh, we can provide you more details about those uh, review articles. Okay, the next question comes from Jacob Walzer. He's asking if there's a way for members to see copies of the original documents listed, uh, rather than just seeing the indexed information. Well, I could say that we're working on that. Uh, we're working on, on uh, the specific scan of the record that the, uh, the record is based, the index is based on. And if you need to have speci uh, specific information on that record, drop a line to the info line and we'll see what we could do about finding it before we have those images available. Our website is being updated and uh, we hope to have that capability shortly, but till that time, drop a line to the info line. And we'll try to help you as best as we can. Okay, I have a question from Deborah Dworski. She says, for the comprehensive record database on the GG website, how can one learn the status of each record set? Does Gesher Galicia plan to acquire all the records? Some of the records have no designation. Some are marked GG with no explanation of what that means. Others are labeled GG with scans available. Can someone uh, elaborate on that, please? Yeah, I think this is me. Um, just on the, I was going to say something on the last question, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer this one. Um, yes, I mean, we have scans of many of the records that we have indexed or are planning to index. Uh, eventually, these will all be online. Uh, on the website, um, available for members, and uh, I think I gather in some cases even linked to the to the uh, to, to the database. There are at the moment some records in the in the members portal in in the box called archival sources, uh, particularly for uh, the J and F project. Uh, Josephine and, and Franciscan cadastral surveys, uh, holo some Holocaust records, uh, and some, so a few others, but th there will be more. And we will hope to, uh, as, as, as Steve has already said, to, to make them available. The GG in the inventories uh, on the global search inventory and, and, and on the specific archive inventories means that Gersha Galicia has indexed the records and they are on the website. 
we have a similar designation for uh, JRI Poland records that we know are on, the, on, the, on their website. And um, when it says scans available, you, you, you can click on that box and you should be linked to scans. They may be scans from the, uh, uh, the website at Agad, which we link to, or they may be scans from the Szukaj Wachibach uh, website with the Polish State Archives. Uh, but they will they will link you to some scans. Uh, I mean that's not complete, uh, but uh, again that, that that's the that's the idea, and, and it will be more complete uh, before too long. Thank you, Tony. While we've got you, uh, Barbara Edmund has a question: When will indexing begin on the books identified in the Shemshil archives? Well, the idea is not to index all those books. Um, I mean, the 577 books, uh, some of them have many uh, entries, some of them are very few, and, and, and some of them correspond with the, with the full record books uh, that are available, and, and there's no real point in, in doing them. We are making the images of all identified books available for members, and, and they are, in a sense, a sort of index uh, as well. I mean, they, 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 you have to work out the handwriting, but it's, they're mainly in alphabetical order, and um, it's not quite the same as having them in the Orgulisi database, but they are there. Um, having said that, we are in indexing a few now. We've already done one from Kopicinsa. There's another one from Strusov coming up soon, and we will have a few done over the next few months and probably we will we will do more after that but as i say the the, the aim is not to 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 index every single one because that would, would be a waste of effort but we would, we're finding ones where 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 they are uh, the, the full records are not available and particularly from the from the late 30s and the holocaust period they have a special interest yeah, I think the next question can probably go to Andrew. It comes from Harry Motes. Is there any update on the progress of the project with the first Habsburg census? Andrew, are you there? You have to unmute, Andrew. You have to unmute. Yes, okay. Sorry, I had a difficulty unmuting. Um, yes, so we have published last year on a first census I believe it was in September or December issue of the Galicianers on our website. I do not anticipate a lot of updates because we have total information on results of the first census in terms of number of Jews living in Galicia, and even per specific, per specific districts. As far as the information of the first census, as a reminder, this was census from 1773, so very early census. We have information so far discovered only on two communities that, as I mentioned, were described in uh, December issue of last year. But even if your town is not within those two, I think it gives a very important window uh, at the, at, the, at the situation, how Galicia looked in 1773. Okay, I have a question from Benny Lewis, who is asking, what is Gesher Galicia, Galicia's future plan for town pages? Will they allow for user uploaded content? Will they be merged with Kahila links or other similar projects with it, which exist? Uh, hi, Benny. I, I, that's a good question, and uh, we, we're working on a lot of updates now, but as to the specifically related to your question on the town pages, this is something we're going to have to look forward to in the future, and we want to cooperate as much as we can with the other Jewish genealogical societies, and we will look to to make partnerships but right now there are you know the town pages 
are as they are, and we will try to improve them in the future. Okay, I have two related questions. Uh, one is from Aaron, one is from Barbara. They're both asking about Holocaust records. What kind of information are located or are contained in Holocaust records? Specifically, Aaron is asking about Stanis Lavov. Uh, yes, thank you, John. I saw the, those questions and everything depends on the type of the records. Sometimes we've got only information about the name, family name, date of birth and occupation. Right now I'm indexing uh, materials like that. Uh, sometimes we've got information about, I don't know, punishments. Uh, two years ago with Tony, we found very interesting uh, um, punishment books uh, from uh, Nove Sons from the ghetto and there is very detailed uh, there are very detailed information about about punishments for example uh, I checked that in December 2018 I published uh, an article uh, about uh, Stanislav so everyone who is interested in please find it uh, at uh, www.geshergalicia.org and uh, there is everything in detail. Okay, I'm just looking through the questions. Most of the rest of the questions that are there are, are about specific towns and I don't think would be of general interest to the many people who are uh, in attendance here today. I think they can be answered offline. Uh, this chat will be downloaded and sent to the board, to the board members to deal with specific questions that uh, would only be applicable to a small number of the attendees here today. So unless uh, I really see like anything else. Say also that uh, I will post my introductory remarks. Again, I apologize. I had everything all tested out. When I entered this program, my headphones and the sound was just not working. I apologize again. And, I and I'll vouch for that. We did a dress rehearsal yesterday and everything was working. So. Okay, so uh, if there are no further questions, I would like to say that I thank all of you for coming. And, uh, and this will not be the last meeting. Hopefully it, it was uh, something that was useful and helpful to yourselves and, uh, and that you know what's going on and what we're planning in the future. And we, Hope that to hear from you with any questions, comments, suggestions on what we what more we could do for you, and we want to be engaged and follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. And uh, does anyone else have anything else to say? If not, I will just uh, close the meeting.